folks. Welcome to the Blacksmith Shop. I'm Lynn Ray, the Historic Arkansas Museum. Casey Marshall behind the camera. We got a nice Tuesday group uh, with show and tell. I want to show you a little bit of something here. Uh, first of all, I want you to see uh, this is a kit knife uh, designed by the kits designed by Jerry Fisk. It's mimicking a uh, the Kerrigan knife, which the Historic Arkansas Museum has in their collection, the original. This one's made by John Miller, and it's we're just looking at the similarities and how close we can get from original tracings. And so they're pretty close. Very good job, John. Um, also, John's working on uh, another gun. Uh, James is working on two or three projects he's got in in progress. And Peter brought some swords, and we're going to be in a long, deep discussion about some of these hilts. So we're going to talk about the hilts. I mean, the blades are interesting as well. We'll get on that, I'm sure. But these hilts are fascinating, and how they're made. And anyway, that's going to be part of our discussion a little bit later. But one of the things I want to share with you is how a blacksmith or a knife maker sometimes has to approach things differently. So typically we'd make the blade, we'd make put the guard on it, we'd put a handle on it, uh, and that very approach dictates the process and some of the priorities and parameters. That's that sets it. You're you're in motion. You go through those steps. I have a, a situation here where I got my hands on a. A sheath that's really nice, made by Paul Long out of Texas. There's his logo. And this was, uh, the circumstances was, the sheath was available. And uh, I wanted an example of his work, uh, leather work. But what that means is I now have to make a knife to fit the sheath. So I'm kind of working backwards. So in Casey's comments, he alludes to something that, fact that we're working backwards or from a different direction so I took some measurements I, I know Paul's work and I know how far the welt comes in so I'm actually forging a blade that is going to fit that sheath now we can't take a hot blade and run down in a piece of leather but we know we're going to be close so let's look at the, the uh, blade as it's being forged and uh, so we're going to shift now to the actual forging of the blade. So I'm going to have to, right now, this has got a string curve up from forging the cutting edge a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to straighten that out. So let's get that hot. Incidentally, in your part of the country, world, doesn't matter, if you don't have a regular meeting of knife makers or blacksmiths, you really ought to seriously think about starting a weekly or monthly meeting. It's very important to get together and discuss uh, your techniques and your ways and, your, and, and how, you, how you do things and your philosophy on either knife making or blacksmithing because you're going to learn a lot, you're going to teach a lot. And the, the cross-pollinating of ideas is going to, uh, it's going to lift everybody up in your area. Uh, your skill levels, and your techniques, it's all going, to, all going to benefit from it. So please think about that. And we, we really owe the Historic Arkansas Museum and the staff a lot of gratitude because they've allowed us to do this for a number of years and we have the same uh, people coming every week it's almost certain that the same ones are going to come and then some more mm -hmm. come, come along as as they can <clears throat> remember two weeks ago we couldn't even have a video because we were so packed out with so many smiths we were so busy it was wonderful to, to see that exchange of ideas yeah and the, the weather all of a sudden changed. Now we got a cool morning. It was in the 30s this morning. Um, and so everybody's just excited about the weather change and, and we're 
we're here in the shop and it's a great place to be uh, when it's cool. So, and I don't have my headband on because I'm not sweating too. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get this hot. And I'm gonna come out and what I'm gonna do is use inertia to, to straighten this out. I'm gonna whack it across. The, it's not exactly flat, but it's flatter than anything else we got that we can access. So we're gonna use the anvil to help take some of that banana curve out of this blade, and then we'll move on. I've got my hammer handy, but right now, I just want to use the flat surface of the anvil. And I am warming this thing up where the, overall, the heat is throughout the length of it, so the distribution of, of uh, the bend will be throughout the length of it. Okay, here we go. A little bit of a back and forth with the heat. Now we're going to be right here. I'm just going to gauge my height where my hands are and then whack it. And again, I'm just using the weight of the piece to to straighten it. So it's a lot straighter than it was. I'm just crooked that way. But yeah. We're going to fix that. It's got a twist in it. Let's go to the vise and put a little bit of um, pressure on it. It doesn't take. I just want to make sure that I've got. something besides my fingers <laughs> to impart that twist to it. So from here out, it's a little bit cooler than here. So this is the part that moved first. And that's okay. We're going to work on that first. We're going to get that in place. And I'm looking down the edge. So we'll straighten that pretty easily. I'm always checking. Always making sure I'm not going to grab something that's going to be too hot. So this this blade is going to end up taking on the shape of uh, the sheath, the sheath. Um, and now we're not going to dry fit it. We're mm -hmm. going to measure, and we're going to go by the dimensions. We'll dry fit it after it's cooled off naturally, but it'll be. Ground. I don't want to get a lot of scale. I don't want to put scale down inside that sheet. It'd be hard to get out. We're not going to do that. So that's that's not the way I'm going to work. Uh, now that we've got the blade sort of shaped like this sheet, I'm going to bring the tip up because according to uh, the shape of that sheath, that this tip on this blade needs to come up. So I kind of saved that spot to do it with you guys watching. So my fire's still in good shape. I can still hear the air flowing through the coke. So I know I've got heat. Here we go. We're just going to bring that tip up. And I say tip up. We're also going to Working only on the part that's hot. Because if you watch close, this little spine right here will straighten out. He's literally bringing the tip up to make a straight blade. Yeah, it, it's already changed a lot since I started mm -hmm. hammering on it. So I'm just going to look at it. I've got a little place right here that I'll blend. Uh, and I'll bring, I'll straighten this out. In the act of straightening that out, I'm actually going to bring the clip down and the tip down just a little bit. But let's check the length of it. Looking for your measuring stick. Measuring device. In the blacksmith shop, early days, we used a folding rule, and of course it had to be made of steel because there wasn't much else. Make them out of modern tape measure might also melt. 
so well, that, that rivet that we're seeing right there in the measuring device is six inches so it's seven eight nine that's a, that we want to be a little over nine for the actual blade but there's also profiling you know uh, bevel grinding and all that to think about so once we get this thing shaped generally like the sheet uh, less the welt width um, then I'm going to start back here and then forge a tank. And that, this blade is going to be relatively straight, so the handle is going to be relatively straight. And we're going to rely on texture, texture for grip. Oval shape, good texture. We're not going to make a broom handle and make it smooth. That's, that's going counter to our purpose. We want this knife to have a good grip. So the straighter the handle is, the more texture I start thinking about adding. And that could be a coffin handle with those domed head pins that would mimic a James Black knife. So that's really good texture for this. So I'm thinking about using that with black wood, black wood and domed heads and then a, a pommel wrap. So I think that's going to be a good choice for this knife. And that sheet, but it's black. It's black. So I think it'll match up well. So that's where we are in the shop and that's what we're doing. And after that, after the after we get done here, we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna talk about those swords. And we're gonna give the forging a break. Someone else can do some work on their projects. But for the Historic Arkansas Museum, again, I'm Lynn Ray. We're glad you joined us. So, see you next time.